Good morning, friends. Uh, once again, thank you to welcome me at your homes in this Easter celebration of 2020. And it's an interesting Easter experience in that we are conducting it from our homes. And of course, the Word of God knows no distance, and I believe it will reach you in the, at the comfort of, of your homes, and it will inspire you to love God more. Now, this Easter service, I want us to look at, um, you know, what Jesus' death means for us today as Christians or as God's people. And But interestingly enough is to reflect on how Jesus, his attitude towards pain. And we read in Luke 22 verses 1, that Jesus instruct his disciples here to prepare a guest room for him to feast with the disciples before uh, his crucifixion. In verse 9, the disciples ask Jesus, where do you want us to prepare for the Passover meal? And Jesus tells them to go into the city, follow the man with a jar of water, ask him and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there, Jesus teaches us, in the face of pain in this portion of scripture. In the face of pain, we keep an attitude of excellence. He is looking for a prepared room. And, and I can imagine, um, and having read a book somewhere about someone who was uh, waiting his executions in the gallows, um, and it, the story told me that when you are faced with pain or with cruel death, every minute counts in your life. And the appreciation of life is at the highest level. Now, a moment, every moment is a gift that cannot compare to any reality of the pain that you might be faced with. And Jesus' attitude towards pain is the same attitude that we, we need to embrace in our lives. And now we need to ask ourselves, but why did Jesus have to die this cruel death? Why Jesus had to suffer? Now, one of the interesting things that I find out is that uh, Jesus had to suffer for a community and um, his consciousness for the community grew stronger in the expectation of the pain he was to go through. In Luke 22 verses 15, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, for a moment, we need to uh, embrace this uh, awesome attitude of Jesus. I mean, he's faced with a cruel death. And he says to his disciples, I have eagerly waited for this moment just to sit around the table with you and to have this Passover experience before I suffer. Now, Jesus had celebrated life, had celebrated community has celebrated uh, the moment of just sitting around and fellowshipping with his disciples before he was crucified. In John 19, 26, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples of whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. One of the interesting implications of Jesus' death, it is how community becomes so dear to Jesus Christ, how his suffering connect people at the intimate level to looking and caring for each other. And the lesson here is that Jesus' mother and the disciples he loved were in pain as they watched him dying a cruel death. 
as they watch him die in cruel death. But despite his pain, Jesus encourages them to care for one another. Friends, you might be going through a tough time. You might be going through a pain of some sort. But you know, Jesus wants us never to lose sight of his goodness. So that through our pain, we can also encourage others to care and love for one another. Jesus' sense of community always um, interested me in how his pain encouraged him to build a community. In his experience of pain, Jesus strengthened others. May your pain, may your suffering never be a point where others are weakened, where others lose hope. But may it be that it is used to the glory of God. It is used to the honor of God. And Jesus teaches us this in this portions of scripture that when his disciples and his mother was going through the pain, Jesus took that opportunity to uh, conscientize people of the presence of each other around him so that they could begin to connect better with one another. The most wounded, I believe Jesus teaches us precious love. The most wounded care. The most wounded accept one uh, another so that they can, in the name of the community, become a better people. May Jesus' pain, may his suffering be the source of our courage to continue the spirit of excellence, resilience, and building of quality communities, whether in our homes, whether in our communities, whether in our churches. May his suffering be a lesson to us that when we go through difficult times, sufferings, Jesus is calling us to being aware of one another and building one another. The second reason Jesus suffered crucifixion is salvation. Now we read in Isaiah 5, 3, verses 5, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed inward and outward suffering for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus' pain was meant for our total restoration, inside and outside. This is the beauty of salvation. The salvation is not just restoring our souls, our spirit, but it is a salvation that is meant even for our conditions of life. So the restoration of Jesus Christ, he was crushed for our redemption, total redemption, for God to restore us inwardly and outwardly. There is a hope for redemption for everyone in this time around. Emotionally and the bodily healing that comes through the pain of Jesus Christ, it is a blessing God wants to release to everyone. Total restoration. This is the salvation. When we come to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and but not only that, but when Jesus continue to heal and save us from what torments our bodies, and and the attitude of Jesus, what we learn again, the lesson of his suffering is the forgiveness that he teaches us as his people, and when this. Uh, people would normally ask, but when is the right time to, to forgive? And, and But in Luke 23, verse 34, Jesus teaches us a principle here that the best time to forgive, it is when it hurts most. Now, sometimes we think it is easy to forgive when we are over the pain, when we have processed enough. But the truth is, the best time to forgive, it is when it hurts most because in Luke 23, verse 34, Jesus, in the midst, in the face of pain, he prays for his tormentors, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So, every pain you're going through, the most appropriate time to forgive it is when it hurts most. And as I draw to conclusion, Jesus, in the most agonizing moment, Express the need for his father in verses 20, Matthew 27, verse 46, and about 
the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, 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 lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, learning from Jesus, David in Psalms 34 verse 19, he records many other afflictions of the righteous. Now, we as the children of God, we are not immune to challenges. Now, Jesus' death, his cruel death of crucifixion comes to say to us, we are not immune to, to pain, we are not immune to uh, any troubles in the world, but there is a hope for us because if Jesus uh, suffered it and conquered and became victorious through this pain, we are also assured of a victory uh, through uh, Jesus Christ who lives in us. But the, the Bible says, uh, but the Lord, David says, but the Lord delivers him from all of them. Now, here is a good encouraging message on this Easter. Whatever suffering you're going through, God has a way to deliver you from all. Just like in the case of Jesus Christ, who went through all forms of suffering, but God delivered him from all. Now, here is a principle. There is no pain above the reach of God's grace to heal. So, Jesus teaches us these principles that whatever pain, whatever challenge, whatever trouble, there is a hope that God will take us through that pain. Before you experience pain and suffering, remember the pronouncement of blessing put or took place before the intensity of the pain. Now we read in the first scripture that we read that um, in Matthew 26, 26, when they were about to eat, Jesus blessed the bread and he broke it. In other words, before the bread was broken, there was a blessing pronounced. So for whatever you are going through, remember this, there is a blessing that overtook that situation and overtook that pain. You are going through that pain not because God has deserted you, but there is a blessing that overtook that pain. And that is the assurance of salvation. That is the assurance of victory for you. And Jesus teaches us these principles. There is no pain beyond God's reach, beyond God's redemption. And I trust that this Easter you will find strength Whatever the world is going through, whatever the suffering, whatever the pain the world is going through, this is the message. There is a blessing that overtook all the suffering humanity is going through. And may we be encouraged and strengthened in this Easter, that this was the Easter that was preparing us for the most wonderful, awesome time ahead of our lives as individuals, as families, and as ministries. And God is preparing us for a greater time of his move in our lives and indeed in the world. May God richly bless you. Whatever pain you're going through, I trust and pray God's strength. I trust and praise God's healing over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. May this Easter be an Easter that will be remembered not only because of what the world is going through. But may this Easter be remembered as the Easter through which God has spoken into your heart that there is no pain you're going through that God is not mindful of. There is no pain, suffering you're going through that God will never take you out of. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you.